Hey, welcome to another video. So in this one, I have a two-in-one laptop tablet kind of thing that's reaching the end of its life cycle. It's the Lynx 12, 64-bit, and it's running the Windows operating system. The specs of this Lynx tablet I have got should be on the screen now. The CPU is the Intel Atom X5 Z8350 quad-core 1.84 gigahertz processor. The graphics is an integrated Intel HD Graphics 400. The RAM is only four gigahertz, DDR3. The storage is only 64 gig. It's practically unusable on Windows, so I thought I'd benchmark a bunch of Linux distributions and install the best performing one. Ideally by the end of this, I'll have a better performing tablet that'll run a lot smoother and won't throttle the hardware. For my research, I went onto Google and I searched for the best Linux distributions that work on a tablet and two-in-one laptops. I found out that you can have different desktop environments, which I like because I like customization. The top ones that kept popping up were the XFCE and the GNOME environment. For distributions, Fedora and Debian were the most mentioned. After reading a bunch of stuff on different websites, I then decided to go to distrowatch.com and look at the top rated distributions. The ones that grabbed my attention were number one, Manjaro for being intuitive, have automatic hardware detection and having a stable rolling release. Second, Ubuntu, as I've heard a lot about this and I've previously been recommended it. Number three is Debian because that kept popping up all over the web. Number four, Elementary OS because I really liked the interface he was using. Number five, Fedora, because that was the most recommended one when I was doing my research earlier on Google. Six, Deepin20 for its friendly and nice looking interface. Number seven, Pop OS because I kept seeing really good comments about it and it looks really sleek. When testing Deepin20 Beta, I realized I couldn't actually install it without having 64 gig of spare memory, which I actually don't have. So I had to take that one off the list. And with elementary OS, I couldn't see a system monitor to compare it to the other Linux distros and I noticed the minimum requirements were quite high, so I took that one off the list. The minimum requirements for the remaining distributions are on screen. I can see that Pop OS and Ubuntu look like they're going to struggle, but I will try them out anyway. On paper, it looks like Debian should be the best, with Fedora second, followed by Manjaro, then Pop OS, and lastly Ubuntu. I created live systems on a USB using Rufus. This made it easy to test out all the distributions without making permanent changes to my tablet. This way I can see if they work with my hardware. Also, I can test them all out within a reasonable amount of time. So, the first thing I tested was how much RAM the system used when it was idle, and the test results are pretty much how I expected them to be. The winner of these tests in order are Debian, Fedora, Manjaro, Pop OS, and Ubuntu coming in last. Next, I ran Firefox on each distribution to see how it would impact performance. Debian actually took the worst hit by adding 9.4%, Ubuntu using the most in total with an 8% increase, Manjaro had the lowest increasing out of the lot, but Fedora claimed first place using the least amount of RAM in total and only having an 8.7% increase. Secondly, I tested the idle CPU usage. The winner of these tests in order are Fedora, Manjaro, Ubuntu, Debian, and Pop OS coming in last, which is a big mix up compared to the RAM results. I ran Firefox once again to see how much impact it would have on the CPU. Pop OS did the worst, adding 16.5% to the CPU and also making it the worst performing. Monjaro had the smallest increase of just 1.6% and also performed the best. After looking at these results, we can see Monjaro is the best, constantly being in the top three. It had the lowest amount of RAM and CPU usage when Firefox was ran too. Fedora, Debian and Monjaro ran close with a good competition, whereas Ubuntu and Pop OS were lagging behind. I'm happy with this result because when I was playing around with the distribution's interface and features, I actually found Manjaro to be my favourite. The GNOME desktop suits my tablet the most, making it easier to access notifications and easily get into the settings. I can also look forward to rolling releases, whereas other distributions like Fedora, you have to wait six months, and Debian even longer than that. So for my use case, Manjaro ticks all the boxes. Okay. So downloading Manjaro, we need to go to the Manjaro website. Downloads right there at the top of Google. And I need to select the interface I would like. I'm going to scroll down to GNOME because that's the one I like and download that. I'll select the 64 bit version. That works with my tablet. Great, download. Uh, it should just pop up if you leave it. Brilliant, there you go. You can see it downloading in the bottom left. 
while that is downloading, we'll also want to download Rufus. So Google Rufus, go to the top link and download this. This Rufus is a standalone .exe, so you don't have to install anything. You can just run it as it is. Now that this is downloaded, we'll want to find a USB and put this into our computer. Make sure our USB is formatted and empty. Next, we'll want to go to our downloads folder and launch Rufus. Press yes. Make sure the USB you put in is selected. You don't want to wipe something else by mistake. Next, press select. Browse to where you downloaded your Linux distribution. Select it and press open. Now all you have to do is press start, press OK. You might get another pop-up saying you need to have an extra file, press yes to this. And then Rufus will install your chosen Linux distribution onto a USB. What we'll want to do now is to close this program and make sure we safely eject our USB. I'm going to take this USB out and plug it into the device I want to install this Linux distribution on. Now this changes depending on what device you have. You need to look it up, but what you want to do is get into your BIOS. So for me, I have to hold the power on button. And when this pops up, I have to press escape. Now I'm in the BIOS. What we want to do is to go to security, go down to secure boot menu, and I want to have this turned off. So from enabled to disabled. And you want secure boot mode set to custom. You can see I've already done this, I've already prepared, but this is what you need to do. Then go to save, changes and restart. Next, we need to launch into the startup menu. And that for me is pressing F7. So when this pops up, I need to press F7 and it comes into this mode. Then you'll need to select your USB device and mine is this one here. Make sure it is in the UEFI mode. Has to be in that mode to launch Manjaro properly. Then press enter. And you'll be welcomed with this screen. Okay, so I've actually moved on to a virtual machine so I could give you a better quality of the setup I'm going through. One thing to note, with this Lynx tablet, when I had Windows installed, it actually took four minutes to get to this menu. But since then, I've tested out this process before just to make sure it works, and it does work, and this booted up within a second. So the time and advice might be a bit different too. So with these settings, you know what to do, just set the time and date to where you're from. So the important thing here is actually driver equals free. If you have free selected, you're using open source drivers. If you have a pretty modern graphics card, you'll probably need to install non-free to help with the drivers. It might help with some Wi-Fi problems too. But for me, I'm just going to go with free. And I'm going to boot Manjaro now. Right, now we are in Manjaro, running off the USB. The next thing we want to do is to actually launch the installer. Okay, so I am running off a virtual machine, but I'm going to go through this setup just as if it was on the links. So I'm going to change my language to British English. Next. Europe, London. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Next. UK default, yep, yeah, perfect, next. So, on my Lynx tablet, I didn't have a raised disk. I had to do it manually. So I'm gonna show you manually as if it was on the Lynx tablet. Next. Okay, so I've just created these four as an example to show you what to do, but once you launch this, you'll be shown four different partitions here. All you need to do is select all of them and press delete until we have one left. And with that final one, what we want to do is select it, 
create. What we want to do is change the file size to 512, so 512. The file system to FAT32. We want the mount to be boot forward slash EFI. I don't have that, but you should select boot forward slash EFI from that drop down menu. Select boot. Okay, now I want to create a Linux swap partition. I'm going to go for 4 gig. What this partition means is when you run out of RAM, it will actually use this space on your hard drive instead so it doesn't throttle your PC. I looked into it and with about 4 gig of RAM on my system already, 4 gig is a good amount to have here. Press OK. And for this final partition, this is going to be how much disk space we have. So the maximum amount has already been selected here and we want this to be an EXT4. Next, make the mount point the root and press OK. Your installer now should look exactly like this. Press Next. Now enter the details you'd like for your computer. So John is just fine for me. I'm just going to put a simple password for now. I can change this later. And I'll make one for this one. Next. LibreOffice is what I'm going to choose. Next. You don't have to choose anything. This is a review of what we've got. Yep, this all looks good, so just press install. Install now. This is what your installer will look like. So I'm just going to let this install now and hopefully be done in a couple of minutes. Awesome, now we can just restart the PC. Done. Hey look, we have Manjaro running on the tablet now. Touch screen is working fine. Everything's moving around, the keypad's working, you can see the mouse there. Brilliant. But, I must say, I did run into some issues. Um, when I first installed this, the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Also, the cameras don't work. I did a lot of looking into this. I can fix the problem with the Wi-Fi, but I can't fix the camera issue. So the CPU in here is the Intel Cherry Trail, which doesn't have much support on Linux, which is why the drivers for the Wi-Fi and the camera aren't working properly. But I'm not too bothered about the cameras because I won't be using that, but the Wi-Fi I will need. And I have found a fix for that, and I will go through it now. First of all, I want to say thank you to this person here who helped me out. This is just another bonus to Manjaro. They have a really nice community with people that can help you out. So when I was struggling to get the Wi-Fi working, I actually did a post on the Manjaro forums in the newbie corner, and this person helped me out. So a big thank you to them for linking me to this and talking me through how to actually run the commands as I don't know too much about Linux. Yep, yeah, so let's do this. Okay, so this is the link we'll need to go to to download the Wi-Fi driver. You can see here it says Arch Linux, but that's fine because Manjaro is actually a sub distribution of Arch Linux. So click on download here and download as a zip. We will need to grab our USB stick again and plug that in. So this is the USB I used to install Manjaro on. You can see it's messed with the file size, but all we need to do here is right click format. Just go ahead and press start on that. Press OK. Once that's done, close that. And in the search bar, type in format. Go to this one here, create and format hard disk partitions. Scroll down. We'll be able to see it here. So this disk 6, this is the size of my USB previously, and you can see this 4 megabyte here is the same as this. Make sure to check that yours matches up. It might be on a different disk to mine. And what we want to do is right click this 
and delete the volume. Yeah. Right, so we can see now that this is all one partition. The last thing we need to do is to right click this, format it. I'm going to use the default and just press OK. Press OK one more time. And there we have it. We've restored the partition on our USB. With this now, I'm actually going to open the downloads folder and I'm going to extract these files. I'm going to drag this onto the drive and then safely remove it. Now I'm going to do smooth transition and take this over and put it in the tablet. Just like that. See it's popped up. Right, so as you can see, I've actually moved onto a virtual machine so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is to open files and go into our USB, go into this folder, into files, and we're going to right click here and select open in terminal. Cool. Right, I've already got the text that needs to be copied in here. I'll put it in the description so you can copy it from there. So the first thing we want to do is to copy this top one and paste it into the terminal. Press enter. That's one done. Copy a second one. Paste that. Enter. Copy the third one. Paste. Enter. And the last one to reset the driver. Awesome. Right, now on the top of your tablet up here, you will see the Wi-Fi pop up. Mine's obviously connected to the computer, but on the tablet, the Wi-Fi will pop up and you'll be able to select your network. So everything should be done now. We've uh, done a clean wipe of Windows and we've freshly installed Manjaro. We've got Wi-Fi working and everything else should be working as normal. The only thing you want to have is the camera, but I'm okay, I can live with that. If you've made it far in this video, congratulations. I really didn't expect it to be this long. We did run into a few problems, but we did solve those problems. So everything is working apart from the cameras, but I'm not too bothered with that. I never use them in the first place. This was a fun little project. I hope I've helped you out. Um, I've certainly helped myself out by getting a usable tablet now. I've learned a lot from this and my main mistake was not researching the Intel Cherry Trail CPU. If I would have, I would have realized that Linux distributions don't have much driver support for this CPU. For future videos, I will know to check stuff out like this beforehand, before I start filming and realize halfway through, there's a problem with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> it all worked out though. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. Even subscribe if you can. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.